Hello, I'm the developer of the Backrooms Mass Extinction. I just wanted to do a quick video to go over why there hasn't been an update. There's been delays because I've been sucked into the activism um, side of what I get up to in my free time. Um, I actually ended up contacting the United Nations Secretary General um, before the, uh, the, the, you know, the Israel-Palestine crisis, um, and I sent them an email, and that email was of something called the Responsibility to Protect Mechanism, and that is a mechanism of the United Nations Charter that mobilizes the Security Council and the United Nations in general towards preventing the mass atrocity crimes like ethnic cleansing, uh, war crimes, genocide and crimes against humanity. So I got caught up in a world event basically um, I'm going to read you the email that I sent to the Secretary General on October 16th that triggered the Responsibility to Protect Mechanism of the UN Charter. So, I, I linked a tweet of uh, a special rapporteur called uh, Franz Alves, Francesca, she, uh, Francesca, um, that's just her Twitter name. Um, uh, Palestinians in grave danger of mass ethnic cleansing warns the UN expert and they urge the international community to mediate an immediate ceasefire between Hamas and Israeli forces. Time is of the essence. Hashtag Gaza. The responsibility to protect, known as RTP, is an international norm that seeks to ensure that the international community never again fails to halt the mass atrocity crimes uh, of genocide, war crimes, ethnic cleansing and crimes against humanity. The international community through the United Nations also has the responsibility to use appropriate diplomatic, humanitarian and other peaceful means in accordance with Chapter 6 and Chapter 8 of the Charter to help protect populations from genocide, war crimes, ethnic cleansing and crimes against humanity. In this context, we are prepared to take collective action in a timely and decisive manner through the Security Council in accordance with the Charter, including Chapter 7 on a case-by-case -case basis and in cooperation with the relevant regional organisations as appropriate, should peaceful means be inadequate and national, national authorities are manifestly failing to protect their populations from genocide, war crimes, ethnic cleansing and crimes against humanity. R2P stipulates three pillars of responsibility. Pillar 1. Every state has the responsibility to protect its populations from four mass atrocity crimes. Genocide, war crimes, crimes against humanity and ethnic cleansing. Pillar 2. The wider international community has the responsibility to encourage and assist individual states in meeting that responsibility. Pillar 3. If a state is manifestly failing to protect its populations, the international community must be prepared to take appropriate collective action in a timely and decisive manner in accordance with the UN Charter. Genocide is a serious international crime under the United Nations Convention and it is widely condemned by the international community. Members of the United Nations Security Council are subject to international law and they have a responsibility to uphold the principles of the United Nations Charter, including the prevention and punishment of genocide. In theory, if any member of the United Nations Security Council are complicit in or supported acts of genocide, they can be held accountable under international law. Then the Security Council must act for a ceasefire and de-escalation to prevent the ethnic cleansing. So obviously that's very heavy subject matter, and especially because it's current, it's it's ongoing. Um, but that is one of the things that I ended up doing, and this was uh, reported in a press briefing of the UN, they read out this email, they read out this extract 
from uh, the responsibility to protect down to uh, down to here. They read a, an extract of this email out in a press conference, and members of the Security Council were actually giggling about me, um, calling me clever for doing this, which is interesting. But things went wrong, and the problem is that the, the veto, the Security Council has this thing called the veto, and it there are five permanent member states, the, the US, the UK, France, Russia, and China, and they all have the veto, and they can veto Security Council resolutions. And the problem is that you, the United States, the UK, and France at first were vetoing ceasefire resolutions, and they were pushing for a humanitarian pause instead of a full ceasefire, which we need. We need a ceasefire to prevent the ongoing ethnic cleansing, the Nakba, the ongoing genocide. We, we need the ceasefire to uh, work towards a credible uh, peace solution. Um, we need that ceasefire. So one of the things that uh, was really going wrong for the whole month was just um, the the political deadlock because the United States wanted a humanitarian pause and everyone else wanted ceasefire pretty much um, and they managed to get a resolution passed and resolutions that the Security Council pass are legally binding to the whole earth, basically every member state. That's that's international law, that's what we know as international law. So they passed a resolution eventually to do the humanitarian pause and then about two weeks later that's been implemented. I mean, at, at the present time we're where the UN is pushing to um, extend the humanitarian pause and attempt to get a full ceasefire implemented but there may still be political battles to be fought um, it really depends and hopefully we can get this done in a timely manner but that's one of the one of the things that I've been up to um, is following this very closely because of what I emailed um, and because of the scope and the scale of the atrocities that I witnessed I also began reporting war crimes to the International Criminal Court and um, here's the page where you do that basically what you do is you click your investigation you say uh, uh, submit it anonymously or you can put in your contact details but um, there was a data breach so I didn't feel like doing that and doxing myself um, so then you you put in the incident name you put in the factual summary you put in um, you put in the, the, the date of the incident the language of the item the location of the incident and then a uh, Speaking of doxing myself, and then um, you click submit, and that is how you um, file a report to the International Criminal Court, and that's one of the things I've been doing. Um, the other things I've been doing are uh, trying to raise awareness of Project Twenty Twenty Five. I've been going to, I mean, I, well, I wrote a, a press briefing and I've been sending it to the newsrooms of various newspapers throughout America um, to try and raise awareness of Project 2025, which is a Heritage Foundation plan to exploit the arms race of legalized bribery in the United States to, um, to gut uh, any climate 
any meaningful climate action um, to concentrate power into the hands of the president. It's kind of a doomsday scenario, like if Project 2025 pans out. So it's it's important to raise awareness about that, I think. Um, and uh, I've also been raising awareness of uh, the, the United Nations Convention Against Corruption Treaty. Um, I spoke with an Australian senator, again, I, I've spoken with them once before, uh, Senator Larissa Waters of the Greens, the Australian Greens. Uh, they've been pushing for to get money out of politics in Australia, to end the arms race of legalised bribery in Australia. It's an um, international issue. And I found the UNCAC Treaty, which is actually nearing its 20th anniversary soon. And I sent the UNCAC Treaty to, to the Senator. And um, they, they basically wrote back and said, this is actually a really useful resource. Uh, thank you for bringing this to our attention. Uh, it's good for uh, forming the conversations in this space um, on uh, anti-corruption measures. And also they said that it's a reminder that Australia could be doing better. So I've been mean, raising awareness of the UNCAC Treaty. Um, I've also been uh, raising awareness of the upcoming celebration of the 20th anniversary of the UNCAC Treaty and trying to tie that back into raising awareness of corruption in America and the, the United States and the UK. Um, because it's all connected to the upcoming COP28, uh, the climate conference, where there's um, like a, the global arms race of legalized bribery is being exploited to prevent meaningful climate action. And uh, I just wanted to raise awareness about that ahead of COP28. And I raised awareness to the UN, I raised awareness to the media. Uh, I've been raising awareness. I mean, really invested in activism for the past maybe month, month and a half or so. And that is where all of my time has gone. I will get back to developing the Backrooms Mass Extinction, I promise. I just got really sidetracked by world events and also a lot of events coinciding all at once. It, absorbed all of my time but there is a big update coming out and you can still look forward to it I'm just gonna have to ease myself back into it and sort of learn to balance the work with the activism side of things because obviously this activism is incredibly important work given that it it's 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 you know there's a genocide going on, but um, I'll try and find time to develop a game and get the update out as soon as I can. Sorry for the delays, I hope you understand what's been going on. It's also been quite emotionally taxing uh, to, to, to witness um, things go wrong and such atrocities. Um, I will try and get back to the game development soon. Thank you for taking the time to listen to my short update and I hope you have a good day.